Hi, in this video we're going to try to build up the idea of Riemann sums, connect back to what you did in Calculus 1, and get a little bit of concrete example of what we're going to be talking about before we dig really hard into the notation and the theory for Riemann sums. Okay, so the first thing I have here is a picture of a definite integral from Calculus 1, and the big deal thing to remember about that, you've got a function, it's defined on some interval from A to B, you chop that interval up into little pieces. And so I've made these little marks here on the x-axis where I chopped it up into pieces. Uh, you choose a point in each of those little pieces. You use the point to get a function output. And then you have these rectangles where the y direction on the rectangle is determined by the function output. So this is our f of c1. Uh, for that first point chosen in that first rectangle, and then the width is your delta x, and you form a Riemann sum, and then uh, you take the limit as the norm of the partition approaches zero, and that's how the definite integral is defined. So the basic idea here is that we want to extend that to multivariable functions, and so in this case, I've got a function of two variables here, and so one important thing about this function of two variables is that its domain is all of R2. So that means that we can use any region that we want to think about integrating this function over. Uh, this particular region that we're going to start with as an example is a circle of radius 5 centered at the origin. And the idea here is that we just want to extend what we did in Calc 1 where instead of chopping up the interval from A to B, we're going to chop up this circle of radius 5 centered at the origin. So we're going to partition. Uh, we're going to start with what's called an inner rectangular partition. And the idea here is that we want to chop it up into rectangles. We're going to start with rectangular coordinates. So we're going to chop it up into rectangles and those rectangles should not go outside of our region. So we're going to have rectangles inside here, maybe different sizes of rectangles. And then what we're going to eventually do, on my on-campus classes I have students build this with Legos and so that's a little harder to do when it's an online class or when you're not here with me. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and build that and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to put a little structure here that's going to help us build this Riemann sum. Okay, so I've put here a little bit better diagram of our region that we're going to integrate over. So this is our circle of radius 5 centered at the origin, in the xy plane. Uh, and we're going to partition that using an inner rectangular partition. I have made some grid lines here. Since I'm going to build this using Legos, I'm going to make my partition go along these grid lines. So they're along whole number values here. So I'm going to use a partition that it's easy to build here. But I'm going to make an inner rectangular partition. And I'm going to partition that region into six rectangles. And those rectangles in my partition are going to be R1 through R6. All right, and a couple of key ideas when I make those rectangles. Um, that my rectangles do not have to be the same size. And sometimes I see students, because of the rectangles they drew in Calculus 1, if I scroll up here, because of the kind of rectangles that you drew in Calculus 1, I see students make all of their rectangles vertical. But we're in R2 here, so we can make this partition go all kinds of different directions. All right, so I'm just going to chop this up into some rectangles here. So I'm going to make one rectangle right here, and I'm going to call that one R1. I'm going to make, make another great big rectangle that goes all the way across here. And I'm going to call that one R2. And then another one here in the first quadrant. I'm going to call that one R3. And then I'm going to do, I want to do a total of six here just because that's how I've set up my chart and then that's not too many to build. Uh, I'm going to make one down here that goes all the way between the third and fourth quadrants here. And I'll call that one R4. And then another one over here that's kind of two wide and three tall down here in the fourth quadrant. We'll call that R5. And then a long one, a long one all across here. We'll call that one R6. Okay, so those are my rectangles in the partition. And of course, when we do this to define the integral, we'll want to use many, many rectangles and we'll want to let them get infinitely small so that they fill this whole space. But because I'm going to build this here, I just made them so that they are along these grid lines. All right, and then the next thing, uh, just like in Calculus 1, when you did your single integral, the next thing after you do the partition is that you choose these points in each piece of the partition, and those points are used to get the height or the y value that's used for each rectangle. 
So I'm going to just choose a point here in each one of these rectangles. And it could really be anywhere in the rectangle, including on the boundary of the rectangle. I'm going to choose them at positive and negative integer values just because it's a little easier to deal with. So I'm going to choose that first point there in R1, and I'm going to list that here in my chart. So that would be negative 4, 1. So these are the points that I've chosen in each rectangle. Uh, for R2 here, I'm going to pick this point right here. That will be at 0, 1. For R3, I'll do one on the left side here at uh, 3, 2. For R4, I could pick a point anywhere in there, but I'm just going to choose this one here at negative 2, negative 1. For R5, I can pick any point in there. I'm going to just pick one kind of in the middle here. That would be 3, negative 2. And then for R6, I'm going to pick one down here in the lower right corner of R6. So that would be at 3, negative 4. Okay, and then just like when you did Riemann sums for Calculus 1, once you've chosen a point in each little piece of the partition, the idea is that you use that point to find a function output. So you plug that point into the function. So this function that I'm going to use right here is my function that we're constructing a Riemann sum to understand the integral. So I'm going to plug negative 4, 1 into my function, my f of x, y. I'm just going to write a few decimal places here, rounded to three decimal places. Since I'm going to build this with Legos, I'm going to go ahead and round that to a whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and write down a few decimal digits for all of these, but round these to whole numbers so that we can build it. Okay, so that gives us function outputs. Uh, the other thing in the Riemann sum definition from Calculus 1 is that you need something that describes the size of the pieces in your partition. So in Calculus 1 we use delta x, that was the width of each of those little pieces in the partition. Here the objects in our partition are rectangles and so when we want to describe the size of the objects in the partition we would describe that using the area of a rectangle. So it's got a delta here but what that really represents is the area of the kth rectangle. So so for this R1, I just need to look over here on my picture here and the area of R1. R1 is one unit across by three units high. So R1 is three square units of area. All right, R2 is six by four, so 24. R3 is one by three. Okay, and then if you just go back and think a little bit about that definition from Calculus 1, again, remember that the idea is that you took the function output, f of c sub k, times the size of the piece, delta x of k, and then you added those all up, and that's the Riemann sum. For the definite integral, then you eventually had to take the limit as the norm of that partition approaches zero and provided that limit exists for all choices of partition and points, then you get your definite integral. So far, we've done a partition, we've chosen points, we've got function outputs, we've got size of pieces. What we next need to do is multiply those values. So what I'm going to put in this last column that doesn't have a header here is the function output, the f of x, k, y, k, times the delta a, k. So what I'm going to get here is the product of these two numbers, 3 times 3. 9. So in the next one I'll have 5 times 24, 120. All right, and then for this last box here, what we're going to put in this last box is really what the Riemann sum would be for this. So we only have six pieces here in our partition, so our sum is going to go from k equals 1 to 6 of the function output f of x, k, y, k times the delta a, k. So I'm going to find the sum of all of those products that we found there. Okay, so 240 is an approximation for the value of the integral over this region R, and eventually we're going to use this to define what it means to create an integral over the region R. All right, the next thing I'm going to do here is build that using some Legos. So I've got my diagram here of my circle partitioned into six rectangles. And what I've built here is part of Legos that represents that. So I've built each of my rectangles here in a different color. So my R1 here, that is one by three units. You can see I've got a yellow rectangle over here that is one by three. From our function output, we decided that that R1 rectangle should be three units tall. And my Lego 
uh, thing here that's yellow, I've got one by three and then three Legos tall. And then for each of these other rectangles, I did them in a different color so they'd be easy to see. So for R2, we've got a rectangle that is six by four. And in our table here, our function output for that rectangle was five. So that one is five units tall. That's this great big white one here. My R3 rectangle that's one by three and three units tall is blue. And then my R5, that is two by three, and our R5 was three units tall. That's my orange one here. My R4, that is three by six, is supposed to be four units tall, and mine is only three units tall here, so I need to put one more layer on top to finish that one. So that I have that rectangle that is three by six on the base and then four units tall for my function output. And then my last rectangle here, R6, was one by six on the base. And then the function output here was two. So I already built that one here, I just need to put that on. So I've got my one by six rectangle and two Legos tall. So we'll put that on right there. All right, so this set of Legos that I built here represents uh, Riemann sum for our function that we were working with f of x y equals 5 times e to the negative 0.04 x squared minus 0.04 y squared. What this represents is our Riemann sum. We'll look at some images on the computer in the next video where we let the norm of that partition approach zero. So we get more and more rectangles, smaller and smaller rectangles, and we'll dig into all the symbols and notation for that definition. But I found that once I have students start working with the Legos and thinking about something like this, it gives them something more concrete to connect their ideas to and think about when I ask questions on a test, students usually are able to answer them if they can kind of think back to what happened with the Legos here.